What's the most important thing you are advising your clients to watch for? Uh, so the absolute most important thing right now is looking at the commodities and that trend and what it implies for the stock market. We've seen a massive decline um, across the board in a lot of the commodities, but when looking ahead in their futures, we're looking at almost a 40% decline in futures over the next 10 months in prices. That's a big decline and, and very abnormal to see that their prices are, are predicting a 40% decline. So one that says that inflation, at least from the commodity side, is really going to alleviate a lot of pressure. I mean, this, the Fed could change their tactics a little earlier than we're expecting as of next year. Um, and this also means that that tends to be very good for, for technology stocks um, who have been really beaten down. And so mm. we've already seen a slight upturn in the past three weeks. But I'm basically saying be ready to change, be ready to turn on a target. Value has had its run for the past six months. We may need to change tack rather quickly. Yeah, may maybe companies, they, you know, in tough times, they invest in software and productivity because they can't find people. Robert, I'll ask you the same question. What is the most important thing to you? Is it also inflation? Well, inflation is always the most important thing in this current environment that we're in. But I think we're going through a very big transition here. And you're seeing that in the two different messages we're getting from the bond market. Uh, with yields coming down a bit, you could take that signal either to mean inflation is peaking, uh, which is what some predictions are showing and what some of the forward Fed forecasts are, are looking at if you look at uh, rate hikes ending towards the end of this year. Or you could take the message that the economy is going into recession. Um, I don't think it's quite that bad. There's certainly economic slowing. But the answer will come this week when we get earnings. And we saw in first quarter weak economic growth, strong earnings. We're starting to see the same thing this quarter. We're only partway through earnings season. And as you know, this week will be a big week. So inflation is always the most important thing currently, uh, but earnings are a really close second here. So these earnings reports this week will be critically important. Are you, are, I'll back at you again, Robert. W w are there any earnings reports that you're watching more closely than others? Is it sort of a macro trend on how everyone is doing? Or are you saying, okay, that name, that stock, that company... They're sort of the, the harbinger of what's to come. Maybe Walmart today. Yeah, I mean, Walmart was certainly an interesting report. Two signals in that report, right? You have one with the lower income consumer shift in consumption patterns. That's something that puts you on a little bit of an alert for the economy. Uh, but the other being them talking about inventory buildup and price cuts, and that's healthy for the inflation debate. So uh, in my mind, it's the macro picture in terms of overall earnings, but really a lot of the nuance that you get out of the reporting and what you're hearing from companies, how they're navigating this environment. And if they're continuing to navigate it the way they did in first quarter, which was with a relatively weak economy as far as top line GDP, but still strong earnings. And I think those earnings coming through uh, will be a little bit of fuel for the second half here. And I want to end the show, Aaron. It's early on a positive note. And I guess the positive is that, yeah, Dow futures are down 130. But given that Walmart is down 9% and is on pace to lose $20 billion in market value, it's responsible for 80 points of that 130. Uh, what is Walmart telling you? And should we find some solace in the fact that it, it doesn't at least appear right now at this hour to be, you know, kneecapping the entire market? Yeah, well, we've known that consumer discretionary has been one of the most vulnerable, particularly in periods of high inflation. And it doesn't look like it's going inflation is is going to really relax in the next couple of months. So, um, you know, you have to be very cautious when looking at any of the consumer discretionary. And, and I think, you know, anybody that focuses on staples, they're going to be the ones that are vulnerable. So I think as, as the market as a whole, when you, you've got to pick the right sectors, the right industries and the right stocks, uh, and that's what it's saying, is we understand that certain companies are going to get hit much harder than others. Like an Aspen Tech... I wish I was an Aspen. It's beautiful in the summer. Aspen Technologies, Aaron. Yeah, so that's one of my picks. Um, I'm looking sort of down the food chain more in the mid-caps. Aspen Technology, um, it's a business enterprise. It handles optimization of business assets. So all about getting more efficient, uh, becoming more productive. Uh, they've had a great run up this year. Um, the stock's come down a little in the past couple months. I think that this is actually a really good entry point to get back into. And again, like I said, these types of technology stocks do well as commodities are coming down in the macro environment. So just a really good company that yep. has been bucking the trend.